Hello, I'm Leon Conrad, and I'd like to tell you a bit more about a live online course I teach using Spencer Brown's approach to classical logic. This makes working with logical relationships so much easier, so much faster, so much more visually intuitive than any of the other ways of doing this there are out there. Let me show you what I mean. Let's take what Sister Miriam Joseph calls a perfect syllogism. All A is B, all B is C, so therefore common sense says that all A is C. Now she calls it a perfect syllogism because it has three universal positive propositions. A universal positive proposition is when you say all of something is something else. There's nothing left out. It's as near universal as you can get. What does it look like in Euler's circles? This is one of the first visualization methods we have out there. Well, you have the first sentence, the first proposition, with what is going to be the subject term of the conclusion, that's the S term, all A, as a green circle inside the middle term, B, that's the repeated term, which is a red circle here. Then all B is C, that red circle gets put inside a blue circle, and the blue stands for the predicate term of the conclusion. Then you derive the conclusion, all A is C. But where's the red circle gone? Well, you have to put the three together, look at their relationships, take the red one out, and then you're left with that. It's a lot of circles, a lot of rubbing out to do. Even worse when you get to Venn diagrams. You have to draw intersecting circles. You have to colour them in. This is the first proposition, and you colour in the bit that you don't want. Then you do the same for the second proposition. Then you join them together in the middle, and they don't look anything like the form you're going to come out with at the end, it's all very confusing compared to Spencer Brown's. Not when you know what you're doing, of course, but it's not visually intuitive. Lewis Carroll came up with Carroll diagrams in his book Game of Logic, and he had two squares nested within each other in which you put grey and red counters. There's an online uh, program that can generate the positions of these, so I went online and generated the positions of the counters for all X are M, which is equivalent to my all A is B, all M are Y, which is equivalent to my all B is C, and to generate the conclusion, you have so all A is C, which means you have to move counters about, read the result, and generate the conclusion. Again, it's not very visually intuitive. This is what Spencer Brown's version looks like. You only need two levels. You only need the level of terms. You only need the level of um, marks. And that's it. And what's useful about using marks that none of the other visual renditions have is that they operate exactly how logic operates. You see, when we put a mark over a term, we show that that term is distributed. By distributed, I mean that you can put gather all of it from all around the place and put it in the hat box, distribute it to the edges, right down to the bottom, up to the top, pop the lid on it, and you've got all of it inside. That is distributing a term in logic. When a term is distributed, it has a mark over it. Simple as that. It's an intuitive, easy, visual approach to deriving conclusions as well. Because if you have a term inside a mark and the same term outside a mark, you can just cancel out the pair and work out what the relationship is between the remaining terms. Here, all A is C. There are rules and if you know the rules of classical logic, it's very easy to tell whether a uh, syllogism is valid or not. But you don't have to trust your intuition or your knowledge. You can use uh, rules of validity that come with the system as well. Now, a mark is an outline. And if we're going to distinguish anything, we need to 
create an outline so we can point to either the inside or the outside. So the outline of this course is as follows. What we get inside it is a close look at how logic works. We're looking at validity, we're looking at soundness, the building blocks of logic. We're going to get to know terms, propositions and syllogisms and come to terms with all of the above. Then we're going to learn how to put propositions into four moods, build propositional pairs in four figures, create syllogisms and validate them. We're going to play logical games, spot fallacies, and we're going to match this approach to other approaches, particularly approaches used in medieval and classical logic. And there's more. The benefits of doing it this way are immense, but the benefits of doing logic anyway are that you get it right. You learn a checklist for looking through your arguments, looking through your train of thought, and making sure there are no faults, or getting it as close to right as possible. It helps you think things through clearly. It helps you find a complement to imaginative and creative reasoning. It does not substitute for them. It works alongside them. It's brilliant. You can use logical thinking for debates, you can use it for public speaking, you can use it for campaigning on issues you care about. And it's not just about talking through a logical argument to convince people. No, it's about getting your thoughts straight ahead of time so that you can meet questions, so that you can have the right answers, so you can find out what arguments are likely to sway someone and what aren't. Sometimes the emotive arguments, the story-based approaches are much more effective, but you reach those conclusions through a process of logical thinking. You use logic to build harmony. And most importantly, use logic for the love of it. If you want to use any of the other systems out there, there are plenty of courses, there are books full of how to use Euler's diagrams, Venn diagrams and Carroll diagrams. You can go the difficult way if you want to. Or you can join me on this course, one of the only courses out there that I know of teaching Spencer Brown's way of uh, doing logic, and learn it the easy way. The choice is yours. The laws of form approach makes it easy for you to get it right. It makes it easy for you to think things through clearly. It makes it easy for you to use logic to complement imaginative and emotive, emotive reasoning. It makes it easy for you to use logic for debates. It makes it easy for you to use logic for public speaking. It makes it easy for you to use logic for campaigning on issues you care about. It makes it easy for you to use logic to build harmony. And it makes it easy for you to fall in love with logic and use logic because you love it. Laws of Form and Logic is a live online course I teach about once a year. You can sign up online. And the great thing about the model I use to offer this course is that the more people who apply, the less you pay. The lower the per person per session cost is. The course is limited to a certain amount of people. And if you can't make those dates and want to organise a group, I can teach the course on demand, either live online or live in person. And if that doesn't work for you, then I will always consider teaching one-to-one -one and doing an intensive course that way. So the details are in the description under this video. Do get in touch. I look forward to sharing my love of logic with you.